Welcome to another day of the Interstitial Cystitis Association virtual Walk for IC Awareness, Walk for an IC Cure. How are you guys doing with it? This is, we're about halfway done with the week and this is great. You guys are doing so awesome using the hashtag, doing the challenges. Again, the hashtag is hashtag IC or excuse me, walk, walk for um, IC2020. Walk, the number four, IC2020. Anytime that you do and complete a challenge, you're gonna do that hashtag so that we can enter you to win some prizes. Anytime that you upload your steps, use that hashtag. Use it all over the place. Every entry is an entry to win some really cool prizes. All right, you guys. So on this day, the IC myth that we're going to bust is that the IC diet, quote unquote, is for everybody. And this is a myth that is really needs to be busted. So many people with interstitial cystitis come out of the diagnosis, especially initially, with this massive fear of food, right? And there's, what I want you to know is there is a huge variety of, of sensitivities to food. There are some people with IC that can eat whatever they want, whenever they want, and it does not change their symptoms. Some people with interstitial cystitis notice a huge fluctuation with their IC symptoms with what they eat. A person with interstitial cystitis has an average of five to seven true trigger foods. And over 90% of people do have some form of food sensitivity, but it might not be as um, uh, involved as you think. And so today, the expert interview that we're gonna do is an expert in nutrition and in women's health and also nutritional supplementation and um, how to take the fear out of food with interstitial cystitis. I'm really excited for you to um, further bust that myth with her in the video that's going to be posted later on. Moving on to the ICA fact of the day. Did you know that you can download an ICA advocacy toolkit? So if you go to the Interstitial Cystitis Association website, you go to the tab where it says advocacy, and if you scroll down, there's something called the IC advocacy toolkit. And what this is, is an itemized list of things that you can do in order to contact your Congress people about how IC has impacted your life and a form letter or a sample letter of things that you can include to make sure that you your asks are something that the Congress person can actually do to help people with interstitial cystitis. This is something that the ICA does every year on Capitol Hill on your behalf, but you can be um, involved as well. And the ICA's website has an ICA advocacy toolkit that is year round, easy to use, and doesn't take that much time at all. So I would love for you guys to check that out and actually write your Congress people about how they can help spread awareness, uh, fund research for the interstitial cystitis patients. Now, your IC challenge for the day is obviously going to be to watch the expert interview that we have for you as well, but I want you to also download the IC flare busting plan. And on that flare busting plan at the bottom of the, on the bottom left, there is something called IC safe foods. I want you to pick five IC safe foods, meaning for you, what do you know that you can eat that does not increase your symptoms? You need to write that down on your flare busting plan. You can take a picture of it and put the hashtag walk for um, IC 2020. And that is your challenge for the day. This can be such, this flare busting plan can be such an important tool. When you have a flare, how many of you guys, your brain just shuts off with anything that can be helpful, right? All of a sudden we go into, oh, I'm doing quite fine to, oh my God, I'm going to get worse. This is terrible. And you go into a state where your brain literally turns off. So you need to have a sheet that you feel 
that you fill out when you're actually feeling okay so that you don't have to think about what actually helps you when you're in a flare. So fill out that worksheet, focus today on the I see safe foods that you know you can eat, that you know don't flare your symptoms so that you have that to go to if and when you are in a bad flare. All right, you guys, make sure to log your steps, talk to your friends and family. If somebody hasn't registered yet, they can still register for the rest of the week and participate in the step count. They can participate in the donation to the ICA. Continue to have fun, continue to post, and continue to advocate for yourself with interstitial cystitis awareness by participating in the walk.